Hey, what's up guys? It's Team Hard Life, Captain Albert and teacher with our next video. And this one is on double drop drone rigs, which are our two hooks set up here. And we actually developed this fishing for drone. And the old school style way was we built, you know, the snapper loops right off our main line. And then we'd attach our hook and go fishing, which has produced many a fish. However, one night I made the determination that I was using too much of my line. And what I mean by that is every night when you're fishing five, six times a week, you cut off 15 to 20 yards every night because the mono would get beat up on the rocks that we were fishing at. And one of my good buddies ended up telling me, he's like, hey bro, you make all these leaders, why don't you make yourself a double drop drum rig? Yeah, it was uh, kind of a slap to a face of reality. It's like, hey man, you know, you do it. And I was like, you know what, I am gonna do it. So I made, you know, the double drop, but I made it originally out of 50 pound mono. And the reason I did that is because we were already using 50 and it worked just fine, so why not try it? So I made the leader, went out that night and with my same buddies, and I ended up catching my limits quicker than everybody else. So we passed off the leader to somebody else. They did the same. and. You know throughout the night it really showed that the leader really worked very well in comparison to the old style way we were doing it so that's how it became about and then it got reinvented again about two years ago when another customer of ours um, broke it while catching oversized and we're talking 30 inch plus black drums and or actually it was 40 inch I'm gonna say it was, it was 40 inch black drums. I will have to double check on that. Um, but he had caught like 30 something of them. Well, the leader was designed originally for slots. So I told him that and I said, don't worry, come on back. I'll go ahead and set it back up again for you. So that's when I started doing it with the 100 pound test. And you know, he went out and tested it. We went out and tested it and it was nothing but awesome fishing. I mean, still catching perch, sand trout, whiting, skipjack, and everything under the sun but we had a more durable leader. Now, the whole point of the leader is to use two different kind of baits. By using two different kind of baits, you're opening the door to using different kind of baits. Sometimes redfish and trout are hitting on shrimp flavor. Sometimes they're hitting on the crab flavor. Vice versa for drum, sheephead, flounder, you know, all the other kinds of fish. Not everything in the water will go same type of bait every day, they normally change up. So by using two different kind of baits, you open the doors for more fish to bite your leader. Okay, now we're in the winter season. What we also notice too, is that sometimes the bays will be over flooded with the larger fish. And what ends up happening is they pretty much have eaten out all the smaller fish and everything else that is normally in there. And when they eat out all the other fish like that, they end up going into what they call a scavenging mode. And instead of them going for big shrimp and big chunks of bait like they normally would during the summer, during the winter, we start reducing it to half that size or even smaller. I mean, I've gone out there with a piece of shrimp and I mean, about the size of my nail, and I was catching 30 inch plus black drum all night long. Where nobody, nobody else was turning to click because they were throwing on the whole shrimp or a big old sea lice or whatever it was, you know, it happens. So, or if you see a fish get caught and you don't see what they're using, but you notice the belly kind of is starting to go in instead of being all nice and fat at the bottom, they're already going through that scavenging mode. So just like me and you, say you go on a diet and you keep that diet for a little while, when you go to see a big old meal, are you able to eat it all? Or do you want to eat it all? I know I've gone through it where I sat there and I wasn't eating very well because I was sick. Well, when that first meal came that I was able to eat it and hold it down, I only ate a little bit, even though there was a lot there to eat, but it kind of kind of grossed me out. So in that frame of mind, I sat there and think, I said, you know, these fish are doing the same thing. They are sitting there, they're realizing they're not getting all the meals and stuff like that. So they're picking up all the little pieces they can just to get something in their system. Their stomach may not be able to handle, you know, the bigger size fish that they normally would get into when there's an abundance of food. Now, I could be wrong, you know, it could be something far-fetched, but you know what? 
the theory has worked in our case and we start using smaller baits and started smashing on fish a lot more and so what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to show you how we normally do it when they are in scavenging mode like that with the size of our fish bites and so forth all right so right here I've already pre-cut it and it's about an inch maybe an inch and a quarter where normally it's about two to three inches is the size of bait we normally would use well now as you can see it's a smaller bait it's still enough on there and we'll actually put it through our hook same way you know shrimp flavor up on top crab flavor on the bottom and see in this too is still at the earlier stages of when they're in that scavenging mode when they're really dead into it we'll go with half the amount and still just put it that little piece there with a small piece of shrimp and yes it's a lot of hook exposed but when they're going through that mode they will still hit it so that will be our top this will be our bottom it'll be the same way and like i said i'll show you the other way that we normally would do it and sometimes too while you're out there check to see if this is already working for you because you'll notice that some of the bigger fish will start hitting on the littler pieces of bait versus the bigger one. So while you're out there, you know, start doing your own little test to see what's working, what's not working. Obviously we change up the kind of baits throughout the day, throughout the fishing trip, depending on what they're hitting. So pay close attention to what size bait you're putting out there and what they're hitting on. Because you may be using a little too much and you'll only be needing a smaller piece. So even on the shrimp, you know, cut it up into smaller chunks to where it's barely fitting over the barb sitting right there. And it will work. We've gone home with loads of stringers with fish like that by using a smaller bait. So there it is. That's kind of what we're doing with the double drop drum rig and targeting everything. I mean, we went out there, we were catching pup sharks with fish bites the same way as y'all saw in the earlier videos when we were out on the jetties. So here it is guys. The double drop drum rig right now during winter time will be a great asset to your collection and opening the doors to more fish that you can catch. So have fun while you're out there. Be safe. Stay layered up because these winds are cutting through your clothes very easily. And I'd rather see you out fishing than uh, sitting at home wishing you were fishing. So, all right, guys. And if y'all haven't subscribed to our channel, please give us a shout out. Let us know how we're doing, and we'll check you later. Bye.